Welcome in everyone to another Baldur's Gate 3 build video. I am Senpai Zaya. Thank you so much for being here today. All right, so according to the poll that I do on my community tab every single week, the Necromancer won last week's poll, and that's the build I'm bringing you today. But I wanted to do a twist on the Necromancer because admittedly it would be pretty boring if I just went standard 12 points into Necromancer mancer wizard and like that was it and that was the build i always like to have a theme or a thematic with my builds and make them a little bit more interesting so i think i accomplished that today with this build and you're going to see why in a little bit so before we get into the level guide i'm going to give you a brief overview of what makes this build different from a standard necromancer and why you should play this build now one of the things that we're doing is we are actually taking life domain cleric as our first level and then putting the rest of our points in necromancer wizard and i know that sounds a little weird but there are three big reasons why number one is because we want the disciple of life feature which does give us additional healing and make our heals more effective whenever we do heal a creature and this will be really good for um a specific spell that we're going to use later on in the video that i'll show you that i actually kind of wanted to build around uh, two particular spells next is because we get access to sanctuary and that is going to be a bonus action that makes it so you can't be targeted and you can't be attacked you can still take aoe damage but other than that like you basically will not be touched which is going to make us super super hard to kill you can't do it every turn you have to you have to do it one turn and then wait a turn and then you can do it again so it's every other turn but it's still really really powerful and it really increases our survivability and we're we're a necromancer but i want my necromancer to actually be the grim reaper so being like this being of death and being really hard to kill death itself i feel like really does fit the theme and the third reason why is because i wanted to inflict wounds inflict wounds is incredibly powerful level one spell that does do a lot of damage and it's a necromancy spell on top of that which is also just like a great benefit to have and fits the theme of our build being a necromancer but with this spell what I wanted to do with this build is I wanted our Necromancer to be able to get into the fight and do a bunch of damage and not just have to sit in the back lines, right? Like we're the Grim Reaper, we're the ones that bring death. So we can send out our minions to like weaken enemies down and do all that. But then I wanted to be able to misty step in behind an enemy and then cast like inflict wounds and then just like drain the remaining like life points out of them or Vampiric Touch, which is actually secretly one of the uh, spells I wanted to build around so all of that combined this is a little bit of a longer intro but all of that combined really sets up this build and what it means to play my version of a necromancer so if that all sounds pretty interesting to you or if you're at least a little bit intrigued which i'm sure you are because it's, it's pretty cool in my opinion then let's jump right into the level guide Force is your race now with this build you can really be any race that you want i don't think there's uh really any bad options out there so that one's really up to you for the role play and the theme because i wanted my character to look like a grim reaper uh the closest i could get was by going tiefling and then because necromancy has like green i wanted to do like you know it's like green hue and stuff so i thought that was pretty cool and uh, but again like that like the tiefling isn't like necessary to this you can really pick whatever you want now class of course level one starting out we are going to go cleric like i talked about in terms of your cantrips the cantrips that you are going to want to take is you want to have guidance absolutely because it is the best non damage cantrip in the game and guidance just makes your life and your playthrough a whole lot easier so take that and then the other two are up to you cleric cantrips besides guidance like outside of guidance aren't really too great so you can pick whatever you want you can play blade ward if you want sometimes i like having blade ward because um I just like being able to activate if I know I can't get to enemies or if I know enemies are coming to me, but they're not in range yet for me to hit them with any of my abilities, then uh, activating Blade Ward is just going to help. So that way when they do approach and start hitting you, you're going to take a little bit less damage. And then uh, for a ranged option here for level one, you can take Sacred Flame. I don't really like Sacred Flame too much personally because it is a deck save and doesn't do any damage if they if they succeed their save, which is really annoying. Um, so you could do that or you could do produce flame i like produce flame better than sacred flame it has less range but you can uh, literally keep it on you then you'll just have like this light on you and then you can throw it whenever you want to 
So it kind of doubles as light, but then also damage. So that's the one that I would go with personally. And now, of course, we are going to pick our life domain Claire, and we do get access to cure wounds and bless, which is uh isn't bad. Like uh, level one, like bless is really nice, so I do like that. Cure wounds is um I prefer healing word because even though it's less healing, it's a bonus action, so I prefer that. But it's always nice to have cure wounds. But the main reason why is because we get disciple of life, and what this does is when you do cast a healing spell the target is going to regain additional hit points equal to two plus the spells level and why that is so important is specifically because for this build i wanted to build around vampiric touch i've always wanted to build around vampiric touch and i've never really found a specific build that really makes it work because the damage on vampiric touch can be like pretty mediocre and the healing is nice but the healing is based off the damage so the healing ends up being pretty mediocre as well but with this because we are going to have full spell slots up to level six the fact that you can cast vampiric touch and it is a concentration spell and you can recast it turn after turn without using a spell slot after you do it that first time as long as you maintain concentration on it when you have this whatever spell slot that you use and this does work with vampiric touch it will gain that healing so you end up being able to heal a lot off your vampiric touch and for us personally we don't need to be the ones outputting an insane amount of damage because we are a necromancer because we do have our summons and our other party members if you want to uh, run a full party with uh, your summons as well to output that damage but this is going to make us like basically a frontline tank slash like assassin hybrid because we'll be able to get in there and scrap with our summons and, and end up doing still a pretty good amount of damage but also being like almost impossible to kill because we're just healing every turn and then we can like sanctuary every other turn uh you know so it just makes it to where like you are such a menace to deal with because like it's like how do you kill you you know what i mean like you're invulnerable half the turns you're in combat and the other half you're just healing back any damage that enemies dealt to you when you were invulnerable. So I, I like, really like that because it's very much fits like a gr that Grim Reaper theme that I wanted to go with where it's like, I'm going to bring you death and I am inevitable. There's nothing you can do about me. When it's your time to go, it's your time to go. So I really like that. For your deity, this doesn't matter. All it does is affect really uh, certain dialogue options. But for the thematic, I went with Kelmvor because Kelmvor does guide the dead to their appropriate plane. So the Grim Reaper naturally does the same thing. So uh, for your abilities, there is a couple different ways that you can go. However, this is how I prefer to do it with this build. So what I like doing is I like putting a 16 in Int and then a 16 in Wisdom because those are, are going to be uh, both spells that we are going to use from our wizard subclass as well as the couple of the level one spells that we do get like Inflict Wounds from our cleric subclass and since you're starting as a cleric you do want to have a high wisdom now for the rest of the stats we do kind of dump them constitution at 14 so that way we still have some health to work with because healing is more effective the more hp you have and then dexterity i like having dexterity up so that way we can go a little bit faster in combat and having a plus one to that and then a little bit higher armor class until we can find some good heavy armor to wear because life domain clerics do get access to heavy armor and shield proficiencies and everything which again is going to help with our tankiness now the other two stats strength index and charisma i just dump them uh this is how i prefer to do it but i will say that if you do want to uh, do this differently then you can use the power of respecking. so for example if you do get like the headband intellect or the better one later on then you can dump your intelligence and then just either put up your dexterity more or your wisdom more if you or if you want to go strength you can do that as well so you do have a couple different options and just feel free to respec depending on how your game is going and that is like the main thing that you can do when it comes to this and when it comes to Baldur's gate 3 and the ability to respec for that so it makes weird builds like this work where like you can't you can have a high in, in wisdom in your thing but you don't need to so i think it works out pretty pretty well now i forgot to mention this at level one but uh not much is going to change level two other than we're going to go wizard so really quick i'm going to go over the prepared spells level one so the prepared spells that i would take level one for this build is going to be first inflict wounds again the 3 d10 necrotic and it does gain an additional d10 per spell level so it's a huge burst damage necromancy spell and it's part of the reason why i want to do this build another one is sanctuary because again this does make you almost invulnerable uh you can't 
be targeted until you attack a harm a creature. So basically for a full round after you end your turn, you can't be attacked or targeted in any sort of way, but you still can take damage from like area of effect spells, but enemies won't be able to like target you or really do much about you. So this is super, super useful for keeping you or another ally if you want really safe. And so I really like that. The next one I'm going to go with is Guiding Bolt because Guiding Bolt is like is just an insane level one cleric spell it does 46 radiant damage and the next attack roll against the target when it hits gains advantage so again you have a little bit of support utility in your range spell and this is going to be your primary range spell for the early levels for doing damage and then last for the other two spells that you can take uh, i like to take command i think command is just a universally pretty good spell to have in your back pocket and then i like to take healing word so that way we do have that bonus action healing when we do need it but that is for uh, level one because we are only putting one point in cleric and the main reason why is because we don't need another point in cleric for anything like we don't gain much and if we go with 11 points in necromancer wizard we get access to level six uh to a level six spell slot which is what we want and it's going to be super it's, it's, it's way better than getting a little bit extra healing basically right so uh level two we are going to go into wizard and then for your spells here you can pick uh, for your cantrips here sorry there are a couple different ones they like if you don't have a party member that has friends then i do recommend taking friends because um that is really nice too but you have to choose between friends and guidance advantage usually ends up being better than guidance so for the ones where you can use uh friends and guidance uh since you can only use one i would pick friends over guidance but again if you do have another party member that is going to pick up friends then you don't need to take that i would take shocking grasp so that way you do have a spell in your arsenal for when you don't want to use a spell slot but you're still in melee range shocking grasp was nice to have and then if you want to stick with the necromancy theme you can take bone chill and this is also going to give targets a disadvantage on their attack roll so it has a little bit of utility i like sticking with the theme of this build so i'm going to take bone chill but really for your ranged option um the, probably it would be better to take Ray of Frost or Firebolt if you just want more damage out of those spells. But again, it's not 100% necessary. And you can still take one or the other if you don't feel like you need that um, disadvantage on attack rolls. And you can still take uh, Firebolt or if you want more utility, you can take Ray of Frost. So that way you can reduce enemies movement speed as well. So those are really your options there. And then in terms of the spells for our wizard spells, the first one that I'm going to shout out is Shield. For any character that it has access to shield and is going to be in melee combat shield is basically absolutely necessary because it is a reaction and then what it does is when you get attacked and you're about to be hit then you can use this reaction to increase your armor class by five and you also take no damage from magic missile which is also just a nice little benefit to have so again because i we are like a spellcaster but really we're like a frontline tank spellcaster hybrid that also can doubles like an assassin um like maybe like a vanguard or something if you're familiar with a couple other different games kind of like that but anyway uh this is really nice because again this is going to make us incredibly hard to, to kill because it's going to be incredibly hard to hit us so on our turns where we don't have sanctuary active we still have an option to not take any damage in the form of shield so that makes it really nice because again it is going to be so incredibly hard to actually ever take you out of the fight now another spell that i'm going to take is i'm going to take long strider because this is a ritual spell so it doesn't take a spell slot which means you can cast it on your entire party including your summons and it's just basically a permanent 10 feet movement speed increase for the entire game so that is super nice obviously now the next spell that i really like here is i like taking enhanced leap this is another ritual spell lasts for 10 turns and it triples your jumping distance so uh, since we don't have access to misty step yet this is going to be our way to jump into the uh fray so to speak and then cast inflict wounds and do a bunch of damage so enhanced leap is really nice and does offer some pretty good utility for exploration as well and going along with that exploration utility i also like feather fall because you can give your whole party immunity to fall damage and this is another ritual you can see i kind of like the ritual spells i like being able to cast spells for free they're essentially cantrips at this point but they have uh, a couple other benefits so uh, this gives you immunity to fall damage and combined with uh enhanced leap this is really nice for exploration because you can jump and clear entire huge distances and not worry about getting knocked prone or taking any damage now the other two spells here are really up to you and what you want to pick you have a couple different options if you want an option for when you are 
being surrounded by enemies, then Thunder Wave is really nice because you can knock those enemies uh, away from you and still do a bunch of damage or knock them off cliffs and just like instantly kill them. So I like Thunder Wave. I think Thunder Wave is really good. And then the next option is Chromatic Orb. I think Chromatic Orb for the early levels, similar to Guiding Bolt, is just a really strong spell and it does offer various different types of utility. For example, if there is water on the ground and you use uh, the lightning uh, thunder orb, then you're going to do extra damage. So uh, having like utility like this is really nice. But again, these are the spells that I would personally go with. You can mix and match as you see fit because there's a lot of options. And then moving on to our prepared spells, this is actually basically exactly how I would run it. So it already knew me. So this is how I would go. I would, of course, take shield. You should always have shield. And then I'm going to take my ritual spells for that utility. And because we do have strong damaging options from our cleric spells already, we don't really need the damaging spells as much, but they are nice to have right now for from our wizard subclass. Moving on to level three, we are, of course, since we're putting all the rest of our levels in wizard, we're, of course, going to go to uh, level two wizard. And I wonder what subclass we're taking. Of course, it's going to be necromancy and you get two things here. So uh, learning necromancy spells from scrolls is going to cost half as much, which is nice. And then grim harvest. Once per turn, if you kill a creature with a spell, you regain hit points equal to twice the spell slot level used which is really nice because again we are like a drain tank right that is basically the best way to put this build is you are a drain tank you are incredibly hard to kill and you are constantly just like self-healing in combat which makes you even hard to kill and drain tanking is one of my favorite things to do in rpg games because i think it's incredibly busted if you can pull it off successfully but you also gain thrice if it's a necromancy spell and since we do have inflict wounds and impaired touch which are both necromancy spells you can gain a lot like you can get put down to two hp and then go all the way back to full health within like a turn or two like this is like absolutely insane because of the fact that like our main spells that we're going to be using of course are going to be necromancy spells and one of them heals us already we have that disciple of life uh from our cleric to give us some additional healing as well so you are going to be a true drain tank and you are going to be damn near impossible to kill even as early as level three so next things next you are going to pick more spells here the uh, only necromancy spell is rate of sickness so you can pick this as a range necromancy option if you do want to trigger that ability to gain some healing so that's nice to have and i think that you should take it for that reason but again it's not absolutely necessary just because you do go specific subclass you don't always have to pick just all the spells that are in that subclass for your wizard you can still mix and match and pick whatever you want and then your second spell here i like taking charm person so that way i do have an option to again support my uh, face of the party because we're not going to be the face we have eight charisma so i like taking charm person because again we really have all of our damage spells so really you're picking up utility spells here so charm person is going to give uh you advantage on a humanoid on a uh, charisma dialogue checks so just like whatever time you get like a persuasion or deception or anything like that you can give your ally advantage on that so that is nice to have and then for here uh put in chromatic orb you can just pick whatever spell you want as your next option i'll just pick ray of sickness to go with the necromancy theme but again this is really up to you because we do have like our core spells that we really want so then the rest of them is just going to be however you want to play it moving on to level four we now have access to level two spells and this is really nice because first off we are going to take misty step almost anytime you're a spell caster and you get access to level two spells you're taking misty step because misty step is just super nice bonus action action teleport up to 60 feet away can't really go wrong with it and it fits the theme of this build because i want to be able to teleport in to the fray or teleport behind an enemy and then just like inflict wounds and basically i just imagine like this grim reaper just like teleporting behind you and like darkness shrouds you and then it's just like it's your time and then he just inflicts wounds with like this highest spell slot possible and just murders you i think that's really cool <laughs> but maybe i just love the theme of this build too much so uh that's what we're going to take and then in terms of if you're looking for necromancy spells level two doesn't have a lot of necromancy spells there's like blindness and uh I think that's like one of the only, if not the only necromancy spell, right? For level two. So, uh, oh yeah, there's Raven Field Mint too, which isn't really that good, honestly. So for your uh, second level two spell, you can pick whatever you prefer. If you don't have a rogue in your party, then I would recommend picking Knock. So that way you can just 
uh, unlock basically any door or chest that you come across. So that's really nice to have if you don't have a rogue. However, if you do have someone who's going to be proficient in lock picking, then this is absolutely unnecessary. And then for your other level two spell, if you want to take a damage option, you could always take like Scorching Ray or Shatter. Those are pretty good. And besides that, Detect Thoughts if you want some utility and some extra options in dialogue. And then if you want a spell to concentrate on, then you can always pick Enlarge or Reduce and you can buff up like your other melee attacker and give them a little bit extra uh, damage. Or you can use it for exploration by reducing yourself to small and fitting into a lot of like those small holes that you do find. So uh, this is up to you in terms of like what you want to pick here uh hold person is also really good too you can take hold person and then um you know what actually i want to talk about hold person really fits the theme of this build because you can hold person someone and then you can teleport to them and then next turn you'll get to inflict wounds with advantage and they can't do anything and that sounds like a grim reaper like you are literally frightened to the point of being completely unable to do anything in the face of the end the grim reaper coming for you so i really like that take old person that's what I'm, <laughs> that's what i'm gonna say okay and then um feel free to mix and match here as you see fit if you want to take one of these out or if you have another character in your party that has one of these ritual spells like featherfall for example if you have like a bard or something then you can take that out and then uh, put in your hold person but make sure you take out whatever and put in misty step because misty step is absolutely necessary to almost any spell caster because it's just too good not to take all right we are now level five which means we are level four wizard which is nice because we get a bunch of different things first thing is you're going to get uh a f another cantrip uh again you can take whatever you want here there's uh not really like a a necromancy cantrip besides the one we already have so again you can take whatever you want doesn't matter i'll just pick friends but Again, it's not too important because we already have like the cantrips that we want to use anyway. And then in terms of spells, this is where you can take whatever that you didn't take last time that uh, you want or sounds good. Like, for example, you could take like mirror image if you want to be uh, even harder to kill for, you know, just why not? Why not just become impossible to kill? You're the Grim Reaper. You're, you're death incarnate. How can you die? Right. And then you can take something like Scorching Ray if you want to be able to have uh, just like a high nuke on a single target or just to kind of build your own eldritch blast like do, 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 shoot a bunch of people so that is pretty cool and then when you come here for your prepared spell again this is up to you just whichever one of these that you want to have in your back pocket and since you can switch this on the fly if you know you're coming up to an encounter where you might want hold person then you can put that in or you can take it out and put in like a scorching ray or mirror image like it doesn't matter and then we are going to go to feet now for uh my first ability score improvement pretty much all of my builds minus like great weapon master and archery builds um i usually take an ability score improvement for that reason uh if you don't want to take an ability score improvement then really you can take like warcaster or you can even take uh resilient and then this is going to give you um basically proficiency in whichever one that you take and it's also going to increase the, um, that stat by one point right so if you take constitution then it's gonna go to constitution get that so you can take that as well i prefer warcaster over that though and um the best thing that i think that you should do here is you should take an ability score improvement and then you can bump either your wisdom or your intelligence up to uh the next level it really does depend on the way that you're playing the build if you are not going to have intelligence up and you're just going to wear the headband of intellect for example then of course take your wisdom up to the next level but if you are not going to wear that because you want to have like a different helmet option like some of the ones i'm going to have in the equipment section later then i would recommend putting up your uh intelligence up to the next level as well as uh for this main thing and the reason why is because we even though like our damaging spells that we're using right now in the early game is mainly from um like our cleric levels like inflict wounds and stuff we are going to start getting access to um spells that are going to start overtaking that like vampiric touch and such right so uh this is going to be important to have to start switching and having a higher int than our like a higher wisdom and then we'll, we can get wisdom up later if you need it but again this is up to you it really depends on the way that you are playing the build and the spells that you find using your using the most is the one that you should bump up to the next level all right so we are now level five wizard level six total which means we get access to level three spells which is absolutely amazing because you don't even need me to tell you the levels three spells are insane so the spell that we're going to take here is not going to be fireball actually it's usually the default one to go but it is going to be a vampiric touch this is 3d6 as a base 
and you are going to basically steal life points from an enemy and regain half as much hit points as the damage that you do. And on top of that, it is a concentration spell and similar to Call Lightning, you will be able to cast this for free every turn after as long as you maintain concentration on this spell. So this is really nice because it's super efficient because you can expend one level three spell slot and get a bunch of level three spells out of it essentially. It's one way to look at it. And again, I want to build around Vampiric Touch and it really fits the theme of this build because like i said before on the turns where you are not sanctuary casting sanctuary on yourself and you are taking damage then you're going to be able to heal all that damage back or almost all that damage back thanks to vampiric touch and thanks to our disciple of life that we do get from our life domain clerics you're going to have a ton of healing and you really are going to be almost impossible to kill like if you don't get one shot in a fight then good luck killing you is basically how this build is is like either one shot me or lose and i really like that and for your other spell there's a couple different options you can take i will shout out haste because haste is always really good but you can't concentrate on more than one spell at a time so you can't like uh cast haste on yourself and then vampiric touch twice like it doesn't work that way i wish it did because that would make vampiric touch so incredibly insane and viable for this build but it doesn't but you could do something like cast haste on yourself and then double inflict uh double inflict wounds and that's a lot of burst damage that you can output so you can do something like that as well and that would be pretty strong so you can take haste if you uh want to and if you don't want to always use vampiric touch then i do think that it's a good alternative to that is um, being able to cast like inflict wounds or whatever other spells that you want to do and being able to do them twice is really nice for that. But uh, of course, because we are a necromancer, the second spell that I am actually going to recommend you take right now is going to be animate dead. And uh, I don't really need to explain this. You're a necromancer. So naturally you want animate dead. So that way you can start making uh, your army, your undead legion, right? So pretty obvious. And we're going to get two more uh, prepared spells. So take vampiric touch and then animate dead and we the build is really online at this point this is like uh, level six is really when the build fully comes online like you're pretty strong just by the nature of most classes being pretty front loaded um in the nature of dnd 5e but like now like you are going to be able to summon um like your use your necromancy to summon skeleton or a zombie you get ghouls later as you get higher levels so that's going to help because that's going to be another just like frontline fire that you can have with you and then you're going to be able to be damn near impossible by combining vampiric touch and sanctuary so uh this is going to be where you do really have your build completely come online and at that point it is going to be damn near impossible to kill you and you'll be able to do a lot. But the next level is even more insane. And the reason why is because here you do get uh, Undead Thralls, Animate Dead, and this is always prepared. First off, subclass features, You, when you use Animate Dead, you can raise an additional corpse. That is super huge because we're gonna be able to have two instead of one, and two is better than one in this case. And we also get access to better summons. So the creatures that you do summon with Animate Dead are going to have additional hit points equal to your wizard level which is really nice and your proficiency bonuses add to their damage which means they're going to be even stronger now in terms of the other level three spells or whatever spells you want that you can pick i like taking counter spell counter spell is always nice to have in your back pocket because it is really high utility and on top of that because aoe is the way that you get damage while in sanctuary counter spell can counter that aoe so that is really really nice and then for your other spell this one's going to be completely up to you because we really do have like our core spells that in terms of level three and below we have all of our core spells so uh this can be whatever you want you can take like feign death for example and feign death is pretty good it's another necromancy spell but what this does is uh you can basically put an ally into a coma and they have resistance to all damage and disease and poison have no effect so it is going to uh just protect an uh, protect an ally and make it so basically they can't be killed so you can take that if you want to or you can take again of course like fireball or grant flight or uh, whatever else you want, I'm going to leave the choice up to you because there is still a lot of really good options or you can just take haste again because haste is really, really nice. And now that we have access to this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out and then we are going to take our animate dead and put it in. And yeah, this is how I would be running it at this point in the build. So again, feel free to mix and match this as you see fit, as you want to, but this is how I would personally be playing the build right now moving on to level eight we are now going to have access to level four spells so 
uh, the level four spells, the necromancy option is going to be blight. Blight's pretty strong because it is 8d8 necrotic damage. So it is a ranged like super inflict wounds pretty much. The only problem is, is it is a con save, which means that they are going to take only half damage if they do save. So that's the unfortunate side about that. But plants do take maximum damage from the spell and have disadvantage on saving throws against it which doesn't come up too often but still nice and because we're a necromancer we are going to take the necromancy spell naturally and it's nice to have like uh that nuke range option and then in terms of your other spell what i actually like doing is i like taking Con conjure minor elemental and the reason why is because you can have multiple sources of you can have multiple summons as long as those summons are from different sources right so for example you can't keep recasting animate dead to get more and more because the creatures that you summon will just replace the previous creatures that you summon from that spell but you can animate dead and conjure minor elemental and have both of those so because we are a necromancer and because we do want to summon an army i think conjure minor El elemental is going to be perfect for that because then we do have another summon and another thing just to be in there in the front lines with us as we are bringing death to literally everyone so that's the one i would take but if you do want a couple different other options then greater invisibility is really nice and it does fit um again like that uh, grim reaper theme because of the fact that uh if you're thinking of like the harry potter grim reaper right like you had like the look of invisibility right so i really like that because it does fit like that theme if you're going with like that and the grim reaper just like showing up out of nowhere and surprising you and then killing you or being killed and you can't even see it because it is greater invisibility so you won't even see it coming and you'll just be dead which is really cool and the other one i'm going to shout out is fire shield so this is really nice because what this does is it is it's not a concentration spell even though it kind of acts like a normal concentration spell would act but you're going to choose either fire damage or cold damage and then you are going to read your body in that specific element and it's also going to shine a little bit of light but it does provide resistance to the element that you picked and whenever someone does hit you with a melee attack you are going to do 2d8 or two uh yeah you're gonna do 2d8 fire or cold damage back to them which is nice because we're in the front lines but i don't think it's too necessary because of the fact that we do have like sanctuary and stuff but if you don't want to be using your bonus action on sanctuary of any every other round then this is nice because we can sit there and we can like vampire touch things heal back and then they're going to hit us and then they're going to take some damage and then you just vampire touch again heal back so it's like this loop where you are inevitably just draining everything around you and they can't kill you because you just gain all the health back so that's also a nice option to have there now moving on to the prepared spells this is where you are going to put in your uh, conjure Meyer elemental and then you can take out whichever one of these spells you want for blight all right moving on to level nine we are now a level eight wizard which means we're going to get access to more level four spell slots so again here this is where you can take whatever you want if you still if you want to dip even more into the idea of being truly immortal then you can take uh autolux or autolux resilient spear and what this does is you pick a target, which can be you or someone else, and you put them in a spear and it does reduce their movement speed by half, but it does block all incoming and outgoing damage. Now this is a concentration spell, so that is something to know, but for three turns, this, this target is completely immune. So for example, if you want to do that on yourself then you can do that on yourself and, uh, you you can do like a, a move where you go into the fight and then you like unleash like your main damage and your main damaging spells or maybe they, like your vampire touching and then they break your concentration then and you start getting low then you can just put this on yourself and then you have all of your summons beating up on the person as you're just sitting there laughing because you're completely untouchable so that is a really nice one and it's a really good option for that however if you want something else you can go like dimension door um for being able to teleport you and an ally so that's nice for exploration as well as it does have some combat utility but not a lot or you can go like length of warding if you want to have like an aoe option with a little bit more utility it's basically aoe chromatic orb is like a good way to look at it so again the choice is up to you we have our core spell so really most of the spells that you're going to be picking after you have your core spells or just whatever spells you want or whatever spells look fun so that's why i recommend and then here this is where uh, there's a couple again like i said before there's a couple different feats that you could go i'm gonna keep it simple and just go with an ability score improvement but again if you want like warcaster or tough or resilient or whatever else you can do those as well and then you can either bump your intelligence up to 20 here or you can bump wisdom up to the next level again this is going to depend on uh how you are playing the build currently and if you are wearing the 
headband of intellect or the one that puts it up to 19 i forgot the name of that one but i'll have it up on the screen then you can just focus on putting your wisdom up because you did dump intelligence and then you have whatever else up higher if you want to or you can just bump wisdom up to the next level and have both of them at 18 and 18 this would be our last ability score improvement so choice is up to you i'm going to go intelligence up to 20 because we are starting to use even more and more and more wizard spells but again it really is up to you and how you decide the build the build and whether or not you are going to use one of those headbands now moving on to level 10 this is where we get our level 5 spells so we have a level 5 spell slot to use and there is a couple of level 5 spells that are pretty strong so uh, cloud kill is really strong but even though it looks like everything about this looks like a necromancy spell it's not like it literally has like a skull like a green death skull so it looks like a ne necromancy spell but it's a conjuration spell so and it's concentration so uh as cool as that one looks i wouldn't really recommend that colon cold's pretty good when you are in melee uh combat because of the fact that you just have like a a super aoe that you can push in front of you and do a bunch of damage when you're surrounded by enemies so that one's really nice however the one that i would go with is conjure elemental because this is going to give us an even better summon than minor elemental and these summons are actually pretty strong and again because we are necromancer because we are raising the dead and wanting to have an army this is going to fit perfectly so that's the one that i would pick personally and then i would also take kona cold for that option but there's a couple other different spells here that are pretty good but the main problem with level five spells is uh, almost all of them are concentration. So because we already have spells that we want to concentrate on, that's something to watch out for. And then here, this is where you can go ahead and you can put in your uh, Conjure Elemental. And then if you want to put in Code and Cold, you can put in Code and Cold as well. But again, you only have one level five spell slot at this time. And basically what you're going to be doing is you're just going to be like after you rest or whatever, you're going to be casting your um, like your summon spells immediately. So that way you can have your summons uh, around and like following you and stuff. So that way when you do get into combat, they're already there and you don't have to use your action in combat to summon them. They're already there. So again, you probably wouldn't have that spell slot for uh, Kona Cold anyway, but if you want to put it in, you can. Now moving on to level 11, we're now wizard level 10 and we get inured to undeath. I don't really think this ability is very good, especially for a level 10 ability, but it's not bad it's just it the it doesn't come up too much so what this does is uh you gain resistance to necrotic damage which is nice for certain sections of the game and your hit point maximum cannot be reduced which is nice specifically for the fact that we are a drain tank and that is one way to counter drain tanks is by reducing their hit point maximum but again it, besides certain sections of the game this ability isn't going to be relevant at all um for the majority of the game right there's certain sections that will be but there's a lot that it won't so ultimately it's kind of disappointing for like a level 10 ability that you get like subclass feature but it could be worse so we'll take it we're going to get it anyway uh cantrip pick whatever you want here it literally doesn't matter at this point and then you get access to uh two more spells that you can learn here uh one of the things that i will say that um you could pick up earlier if you want to and one of those um i kind of forgot to mention this one earlier but you can take sleep and the reason why is because when you do get the better summons at later levels when you can uh, get like the flying ghoul i'll have it up on the screen but they have an ability where they do like their strongest attack is actually when an enemy is asleep and it's like they like consume their nightmares or whatever um kind of like like gengar from like pokemon right so uh like what is that called dream eater i think so um what you can do is you can use like sleep and then just upcast it up enough to be able to affect the target put them to sleep and then have your ghoul uh, devour their soul pretty much so uh that is one combo that you can use so if you don't know what else to pick up you can pick up sleep at any point in this build if when you just didn't know what else to pick or if you want to pick it up early because sleep early is actually pretty pretty strong and then your next spell it really doesn't matter you can pick whatever you want um because again like i said before we do have our core spells here and then we will move on to our final level of the build we are wizard level 11 which means we get access to level six spells and level six spells naturally be pretty strong because it's the highest level spells that we have access to so there's a couple different options here there is going to be wall of ice wall of ice does a lot of damage pretty good um there is the Autolux Freezing Spear. I love this one for the fun of it. Not, I don't recommend it for this build, but I do think it's really fun because you can store this spell for later use after you summon it and you can just 
throw like a rosin on like a like an ice rosin on at someone basically so that's pretty cool global invulnerability is really nice because you can create a barrier that makes creatures and objects inside it immune to all damage lasts for three turns so it's like that resilient spear but it's a globe so anything that enters it is going to be immune to all damage so that one's pretty cool uh flush to stone is a crazy spell where if they fail their con slave, you restrain them until they temporarily turn to stone. So that one is an insane amount of CC. But the ones that I'm going to shout out and the ones that I think are the best here is if you want Necromancy spell, you can pick Circle of Death. That's going to be pretty good. But again, it is a con save. So they are only going to take half damage. But it does do an insane amount of damage to creatures in a specific area. So that's nice. Chain Lightning is... Uh, a huge aoe damaging spell too where you just pick a target and then the it chains off of them chain lightning chains off of them does a bunch of damage so that's also really good uh create and dead is so when you just want to be able to create an undead and you don't have any corpses around so that might be nice to have in your back pocket and then you have disintegrate i like disintegrate um as the main one because it's disintegrate it's pretty iconic and it's absolutely insane like the minimum damage is 50 uh, damage right and then on top of it it also looks really cool because if you reduce their hit points to zero they literally disintegrate into ash so uh between 50 and 100 damage it's kind of hard to beat that on a single target and you're the grim reaper so i think that having a spell that is basically the equivalent of just sentencing someone to death and just taking their soul is pretty good and i think it's pretty thematic for the grim reaper just to walk up on someone who's talking all this shit and it's like it's your time to die snaps their fingers and you just turn to ash because like they're the grim reaper like they they bring death that's what they do so feel free to pick the ones that you want uh to pick here and then that will be it for the level guide again there is with Baldur's gate 3 there is a lot of flexibility and things you can do so even when someone like me does bring you a build feel free to mix and match it to really fit your play style as you see fit i'm just here to bring you a general guide of the options that you have available when having like a theme or an idea for a build in mind so keep that in mind but let's move on to the equipment section all right so moving on to the equipment section i'm going to be having a couple different equipment that i do recommend for this build popping up on the screen now the ones that i will shout out and the ones that you should look for is equipment that is going to either affect your summons there's a specific piece of equipment that i have on the screen that does affect summons it makes them even better and equipment that does give you a benefit when you do heal somebody because you do you do have a lot of healing with this build with like being able to bonus action healing word or uh just killing something with a necromancy spell or even using vampiric touch as your concentration spell if that's what you want to do you don't have to take that route i just really like that route because i did want to build around vampiric touch then uh, getting a benefit when you do heal since you are doing a lot of drain tanking with this build is just going to help you but that's like the main equipment that i would look for and then other than that i would look for equipment that makes you uh, as tanky as possible we have heavy armor proficiency and we don't have a lot of decks so make sure to wear like adamantium uh so i think it's splint mill armor and just be super tanky and even harder to kill all right and for the build recap so when you combine this entire build and it comes together what you have is you have a grim reaper necromancer who is able to create an army some undead some of the elemental nature of course but on top of that not only can you build an insane frontline thanks to your undead army you can be an even more insane frontline yourself because you are going to be a drain tank who can output a pretty pretty good amount of damage but on top of that you yourself are almost impossible to kill combined effects like shield all of your healing vampiric touch sanctuary like being the enemy that takes you out of a fight if it ever does happen they deserve an award because they would really have to work for that or you would have to get unlucky and have to get like critted four times in a row by some insane boss or something like that because with this build like it is so hard to even hit you and if they do end up hitting you you're just going to heal that damage back so i really like this because it allows you to play a necromancer have a unique spin on a necromancer by being a drain tank necromancer which is still like thematic because you're sapping the life force out of uh your enemies to empower yourself so it does fit like that necromancer theme of um you know, like I've always thought like a necromancer's kind of had that where like slap the light force out of things and then use it to feel like their summons or feel like their own power. So it's very thematic and it's a lot of fun to play and it's really comfortable to play too because your minions are doing most of the work for you and you're never going to die. So I really hope you enjoyed this Baldur's Gate 3 build video. If you did, make sure to leave a like on the video as well as hit the subscribe button so that way you never miss when I upload. I do upload every single Friday, so make sure to come back Friday for next week's video. And that is all the time I have for you today, so I will see you in the next one.